This video is brought to you by my supporters over on my Patreon page. Check out the link in the description and check out our weekly guided ear training and practice routines today. Hi everybody, Levi Clay here and I'm back again to talk to you about the subject of practice. And while I have been plugging my weekly guided practice routines for the last four weeks, of course, link in the description, this week I'm going to take a break from talking about my weekly guided practice routines and I'm going to move on to start talking about weekly guided ear training sessions because shock horror... As you all know, I work professionally as a transcriber. That's a big part of how my career has taken form. Um, and some people think that I have a pretty impressive ear. And I don't know if I go as far as um, some people are impressed, but I will give you that. But it's not a flawless ear. By no stretch of the imagination is it a flawless ear. And I, you know, one of the questions I get asked all the time is, do I have perfect pitch? And the answer to that is, is absolutely not. No, I don't have perfect pitch. Not even close to perfect pitch. I have very good relative pitch, and I have the ability to hear something and almost immediately be able to play it on the instrument but that's because my connection between my ear and my hands is so well developed uh, from doing it all day every day and yeah definitely a skill that I'm looking to help you guys with but something that can be worked on but doesn't come from perfect pitch and let me be clear not something that I was born with either so what I wanted to talk about today um, was obviously those weekly guided practice um, sessions and the ear training sessions that I'm doing every week for my guys over on Patreon but also just this idea of what is required required what i think is required as part of ear training because i think um many of you guys out there have tried to develop your ear and i i know the route that is usually done for that in fact obviously i went to music school uh, i have had what many would consider to be a formal education in music and i found the oral and transcribing aspects of my music school training to be almost useless dreadful um i would go as far as saying because there are, I think, two ways that you can practice developing the ear. One of them is suitable for testing, and one of them is almost impossible to test well. Uh, and we focus so much on this area that is very testable that I don't think it's massively applicable to really training the ear to be something that's impressive. So I think there's two areas that you would need to work on, right? One is recognition okay Rec recognition of intervals or chords or whatever it happens to be so somebody plays something and you have the skills to be able to identify what that thing is recognition and that's not quite the same as what i would call anticipation being able to hear something and then in relation to that thing hear something else being able to audiate being able to imagine a sound that you haven't been presented with if i say to you major seven not even pitch just major seven can you hear what a major seven chord sounds like that's a very different skill to having somebody just play you a major seven chord and you to be able to immediately go that's a major seven chord now don't get me wrong that second skill, being able to hear something and tell me what it is, it's not that that's a bad skill to have. It's an easy skill to learn. It's an easy skill to teach. And it's an easy skill to test, which is why it's something that I think is taught so heavily in music schools. But it's nowhere near as tricky as that anticipation skill, the audiating, being able to hear something that isn't there, being able to imagine a chord that isn't there. So I'm going to switch on over to a website now. I'm going to give you a quick example of what I mean. Check it out. So I'm just over here on tonedeer.com, and I'm using this just as an example of interval testing, okay? Uh, what we're going to do here, this is what you would tend to see in any sort of music school test. An interval is played to you, and you need to be able to identify that interval. I think many of you guys, when you go and you look at ear training courses, or you look at apps on the app store, this is primarily the way that ear training is presented to you. And it's given to you as a skill that if you work on this, it will somehow make you a better a musician it will improve your ear and there's an element of that but it's nowhere near as valuable as the audiating side of things so let's test it out let's uh, hear first question the sixth that's a fourth major second fifth seventh that's uh, a third that's an octave that's um, uh, a fifth. That's a fourth. It's a sixth. 
we could do this all day. We could maybe start introducing other intervals, right? So let's put the second, the minor third, the tritone, the minor sixth, the minor seventh. We'll 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 skip the compound interval. So let's keep going. Uh, that's our minor six. That's a major second. It's flat five. That's a minor third. Um, uh, that's a minor seven. Yeah, we'll stop there. <laughs> so, um, as you saw, like when I was going through that, it's not something that is impossible. It's something that can be done, and you can get faster at this. And ultimately, you know, I have reference songs for all of these. When I hear these intervals, there's essentially a trick that's going on there, right? I hear a major third, and I hear the Simpsons theme. If I hear a minor third, I hear Iron Man. If I hear um, a major seventh, I hear the Superman theme. Uh, if I hear a major sixth, I hear the second part of Somewhere Over the Rainbow, so on and so forth. These are all things that can be worked on and should be encouraged. But the trickier skill is the audiating, right? So I've been trying my best to split these weekly guided ear training sessions into these two areas, right? One is this, the recognition, and one is audiating. So if I jump over to the piano, I have to now ask you, can you, if I play a note, if I play a C... But then I have to ask you, can you hear a fifth over the top of that? If you hear this note, bah, listen, and can you sing a fifth? Bah, bah. If the answer to that is no, then who cares that you can hear a fifth and tell me what it is? Because as a transcriber, as somebody that literally sits with music and listens to it and writes it down. Never, never do I hear an interval and go, ah, that's a fourth, and then find it on the instrument. That's that's not a thing, for me at least. And of all of the transcriber friends that I've had, that's never been something that I've particularly seen as something that we would consider to be something that you need to develop. Um, certainly nowhere near as, as much as you would need to develop the skill to be able to audiate, the skill to be able to hear a sound. Outside of the transcription thing, as an improvising musician, as somebody that plays over chord changes, a big part of that, a big part of playing a melody over one chord that's moving to another chord is being able to hear what that chord that you're going to sounds like before it happens, is to be able to hear the melody that you're playing and to be able to imagine where you're going with that melody and to be able to really hear quite strongly what it's going to sound like when you get to that chord with the note that you're planning to land on with the note that you're visualizing or hearing if you like when you get there let's just do um, i'll do one more of these intervals just to test you again so if i if i go on c can we hear what a major third is going to sound like now i'll just jump straight in and go if we've got c as this is our root ba 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 that's going to be our major third and i'm hearing that in a reference melody if you like is for me it's simpsons ba 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 can't get down to an f sharp um but you know where i'm getting i hear that melody that's how i'm how i'm doing that i think that's the way that people do this it's the way you develop that as a skill now the final um exercise that i'm going to give you for this just as and this is actually a, a great modal practice uh, practice size that's not a word this is a great way to practice modes and hearing different modes if we can get to a stage where we can audiate and hear a major scale so if i play this c ba ba oh sorry major scale if we can hear this ba 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 you can really hear that major scale you should be able to take any one of these notes and flatten it by a semitone and anticipate what that note is going to sound like. So if I do that up to the fifth there, if I lower that semitone, can you hear that note? It's a non-diatonic note. It doesn't fit within the scale, but can you hear that note? The exercise I'm going to give you for this is practicing the difference between the major scale one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, or C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and C, and the mixolydian mode, which is the major scale with a flat seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, flat seven, or C, D, E, F, G, A, B, flat, and C. 
So if I play really slowly up this major scale, I want you to anticipate each note as I play it. If this is C, the one, ba, I want you to sing the next note before I play it. Not after I play it, before I play it. Ba, 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 ba. That's our major scale. That's me anticipating those sounds. Ba, da, 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 da. And let me be clear. This isn't about your ability to sing. I'm not a singer. You can tell I'm not a singer. That's not the point here. I'm demonstrating what I'm hearing inside. So you could do that same exercise and listen for the note. You, as long as you're hearing the note before it's played, as long as you hear the note before you hear it, <laughs> then you're on the right path. I want to now do that same thing, but I want you to anticipate what this flattened seven is going to sound like. Ba da 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 da. It's not the regular seven. It's going to be lower. Da, da. That's our mixolydian sound. And that flat seven, I don't want to say should take you by surprise, but you should be able to hear that note. You should be able to really anticipate the sound of that note when you are when you hear people playing. that flat seven in there you should be able to hear what that flat seven sounds like it's an important part of musical vocabulary and this is you can just go from here if you can anticipate the sound of mixolydian one two three four five six flat seven one well dorian is the same thing but with a flat three could i do the same thing and anticipate what a flat three is going to sound like ba 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 a bit flat. Ba, ba, ba. Can you hear the difference between those three things? I should be able to, and we've come full circle, we've gone back to the start now where if, you know, in music school, they would play this for you. And you'd say, that's a major scale. And then they'd play this. And you say, that's Mixolydian. They'd play this. And you say, that's Dorian. That's one thing. But can you hear them? Can you have somebody play you a C major chord? And can you sing over the top of that a major scale? Can you sing or can you hear a Mixolydian scale over the top of this? If I change the chord to a minor seven, if I play this, could you sing Dorian over the top of this? Could you sing melodic minor over the top of this? These are skills that I think are really important in developing your ability as uh, as a musician and as however you want to think of yourself as a transcriber as a player our ear is our most valuable skill do not neglect it put some time into your ear check out my weekly guided ear training sessions <laughs> i was going to say a huge thank you to my wonderful supporters over on patreon i couldn't you know i wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for you yeah you know, i'm incredibly grateful for all of the wonderful support i've had from you guys over there over the last month um you know if you check us out on patreon now you're going to get access to five weekly guided practice sessions immediately uh, you'll get access to three ear training sessions immediately and there's just more and more being added every single week so thank you so much guys um, if you want to check it out please do you're absolutely awesome and if that doesn't suit you can also head on over to amazon I've got several books available check one of them out i'm sure you will find something you enjoy thanks so much for checking this video out guys if you do have any questions please do let me know in that comment section below you've been awesome i've been just levi <laughs> thanks one more time and I will see you next week for some more videos talking about practice. Laters.